Okay, so here in this question, we are talking about Bohr's model of the atom. Let's see. So the energy of the energy of the second orbit of hydrogen is equal to what? Basically, they are saying that you have an electron in the second orbit of the hydrogen atom. Fine. So that energy of that electron in the second orbit of hydrogen atom is going to be equal to which of these uh, options, right? A, B, C, or D. That is what we have to find out. So basically, what do you know? You know that E is equal to E naught into Z square by N square. Okay? Your E naught can take any value as long as it's in the same units, we don't care about it. Right? So I can say that E is directly proportional to Z square by N square. Fine. So basically, what we'll do is whatever the question is asking, according to that, we'll find out the Z square by N square ratio. Okay. And we will find out the Z square by N square ratio for options A, B, C and D. Wherever you find the same Z square by N square ratio, that is going to be your answer. So let's see. Here they're saying second orbit, so N is equal to 2. And they're saying hydrogen atom, so your Z is going to be equal to 1. So your E is going to be proportional to 1 by 2 square, which is nothing but 4. Okay, so here the ratio that you need to match is 1 by 4. So let's get started. Option A, fourth orbit of HE plus N is equal to 4, Z is equal to 2. What will you do? Z square by N square. Or let's do it little systematically. Let's solve it here. So for helium. Let's solve. You have, I'll just write it like this, energy is directly proportional to Z square, which is 4, divided by N square, which is 16. So this is 1 by 4. So you have 1 by 4 here already. This is matching. Then, fourth orbit of Li2 plus, so which means N is equal to 4, Z is equal to 3, right? So Li, let's talk about Li. You have energy is directly proportional to what? Z square, 9 divided by n square 4 4 16 right so 9 by 16 not matching 1 by 4 so we can ignore it second orbit n is equal to 2 of he plus z is equal to 2 so he plus yet again you have energy is directly proportional to uh, what do you have z square so 4 divided by n square is 4 this is equal to 1 which is not equal to 1 by 4 then you have second orbit of lithium 2 plus n is equal to 2 z is equal to 3 so e is going to be directly proportional to z square by n square so 9 by z square is 4 this will be uh, is 9 by 4 right also not equal to 1 by 4 so only one option as you can see option a is matching with the question so option a fourth orbit of he plus is going to have the same energy as the electron in the second orbit of hydrogen and hence option a is the right answer to this question Okay, so here, let's see, they're saying that an element A has an outer electronic configuration 2s2, 2p4, right? The number of covalent bonds in A2 is going to be what? See, so basically you have an element A whose inner shell configuration we don't care about. The outer shell configuration is 2s2, 2p4. Now, looking at this outer shell configuration, can you uh, comfortably say that this belongs to group 16? Right, this is a group 16 element or it's a chalcogen. And what does that mean? It means that the valency that this particular element will have will come from accepting electrons, right? One very famous example that we know is of course oxygen. The valency of oxygen is 2 minus because it has a tendency to accept electrons. When you try to draw the structure of O2, what do you have? You have this O double bond O right so similarly for this element a also you will have a2 is nothing but a double bond a right so this is one sigma one pi bond but both of them are covalent in nature these bonds are formed by sharing of electrons correct so the correct answer here is going to be option b2 okay so here they are asking you with increasing molecular weight of a liquid the viscosity decreases increases remains constant or none of the above this is the question here right so basically first things first what is viscosity 
Viscosity is the idea of resistance to flow. Okay, if a substance or if a liquid it has higher resistance to flow, then it has a higher viscosity. Okay, for example, compare water and honey. Water flows more easily and honey has more difficulty flowing, right? Honey has more resistance to flow. So, honey is more viscous than water. Clear? Okay, now from where is this resistance to flow coming? Why do you have this resistance to flow? Basically, you have, let's let's talk about honey because we've already established that honey is more viscous. So, you have, let's say, molecules of honey, right? You have molecules of honey. Between these molecules of honey, what you have is a pretty strong intermolecular attraction, right? Of course, because by virtue of being liquid, they're not going to be stuck together like that. But they have a very high attraction between themselves, okay? So, now what do you know? Intermolecular forces of attraction depend on what? Basically, you can say intermolecular forces of attraction are nothing but Van der Waals forces. So, Van der Waals forces depend on molecular weight, yes or no? How do they depend? As the molecular weight increases, the Van der Waals forces of attraction are going to increase. Correct? Okay. So, now what have they said? As the Van der Waals force of attraction increases, what happens? The viscosity will increase. Yes or no? The viscosity is going to increase. Now, the question is asking you, with the increase in molecular weight of a liquid, so they have, let me use a different color, so they have done this, they have pushed the molecular weight, molecular weight has been increased. What will happen? Uh, Van der Waals forces will increase. If Van der Waals force, uh, forces increase, what will happen? viscosity will increase okay so here uh, what is happening to viscosity it is going to increase so the correct answer here is going to be option b so here they're saying that for the reaction 2a gaseous plus b gaseous is in equilibrium with c gaseous your delta h is equal to plus x kilojoules which of the following favor the formation of reactants okay so they're asking which of the following will favor the backward reaction. So, let's uh, properly understand the reaction given to us. So, you have 2A plus B is in equilibrium with C and you have delta H is equal to plus X kilojoules. What does that mean? It means that your reaction is basically endothermic, right? Okay, so your reaction is endothermic in the forward direction. Okay, great. So, what do you need? You need the backward reaction to be more favorable. So, you can alternatively write this as C is in equilibrium with 2A plus B. Right? All of them are gaseous. And you can say that here the forward reaction, I'll call it delta H prime, is equal to minus X kilojoules. Right? So, basically here the forward reaction is exothermic. Right? So, the reaction wants to release the heat. Okay? Fine. So, this is the setup we're going with. Now, now, let's see. What happens when you try to lower the pressure? If you uh, have a lower pressure, what happens? You move in the direction of what? In the direction of higher number of gaseous moles. Okay. So, here you can see where do you have a higher number of gaseous moles? Here on the reactant side, you have one mole. And the pro uh, product side, what do you have? You have 2 plus 1, 3 moles, okay? 2 moles of A and 1 mole of B, you have 3 mo uh, moles of gaseous uh, products, fine? So, when you decrease the pressure, the reaction will move forward. So, low pressure conditions are favorable, which means automatically high pressure will not be favorable, right? When you increase the pressure, the reaction will tend to move backward or more of C will be produced. This is not what you want then. High temperature. You can see that here your forward reaction is exothermic. So, basically your system wants to get rid of energy to move in the forward direction. But if you're increasing the temperature, what you're doing is you're giving more energy to the system. The system is trying to get rid of energy and you're supplying more energy. What will happen? The system will move backward. That's not what you want. 
and the presence of a catalyst. So presence of a catalyst does not determine the position of the equilibrium. This is something you have to remember. Catalyst will speed up the reaction. It will increase the rate of the reaction, but it will not determine the position of the equilibrium. So you can ignore this. So you can see only one condition is favorable, which means the correct answer to this question is going to be option A, low pressure. Okay, so here it's saying the strongest hydrogen bonding is present in. Your options are HF, HCl, HBr and HI. Basically, they are talking about hydrohalic acids, HX, right? Now here your halide ion is changing. Basically, you have fluoride, chloride, bromide, iodide or you can say your halogen is changing. So, how do you determine the strength of hydrogen bonding? First of all, you need to look at the element that is providing the delta negative. See, basically when you talk about a hydrogen bond in a general case, you have one element, let me call it M, and you have hydrogen, right? So these two are in different molecules. That is the first thing, almost always, right? Apart from when you're talking about intramolecular hydrogen bonding. In case of intermolecular hydrogen bonding, these will be in two different molecules, right? So this will provide del minus, this will provide del plus, okay? And this is of course attached to a strongly electronegative element. Now here, if I have to say that the hydrogen bond between this M and hydrogen, if this has to be really strong, what can I say? I need, I can say that this element, this electronegative element has to be highly electronegative so it can pull the shared pair of electrons more and create more del positive on hydrogen. That is the first thing. Second thing is, if this M that we are talking about here, the uh, element which is giving the del negative for the formation of hydrogen bond, if that has a lot of cloud, right, if it has a lot of del negative, then it can form a more effective or a more strong hydrogen bond with this hydrogen okay so this is what we need to understand basically i want you to look for a species in which you can see a lot of uh, deficit created on hydrogen and at the same time you need the corresponding uh, electronegative element to be highly electronegative so the del minus is very high fine these two things so you have hf hcl hbr hi fluorine highly electronegative Chlorine is also highly electronegative. Bromine, a uh, little bit less. Iodine, even lesser. Okay, so out of these four, if I have to talk about the order of electronegativity, this is the order, correct? Which means this is the order in which they will have del minus in solution, okay? Or you can say that this is the order in which they will create del plus on hydrogen. So, maximum del plus del minus the combination that we needed is being created by fluorine, which means HF is going to be the one where you have the strongest hydrogen bonding present. Cool. So, this is there. Okay. Another thing, well known fact is that due to hydrogen bonding, the uh, boiling point of HF increases greatly as compared to your other uh, hydrohalic acids. Fine. Hydrogen fluoride, HF has very strong hydrogen bond, right? So option A, HF is going to be the right answer to this question. 